Hi everyone, this is Nya and today I'll be painting mushrooms again. This is a red lead round head mushroom which I took inspiration from a picture I found on Pinterest. I love the color and shape of the mushrooms and I also like the shininess of it from the reference image. So here's my attempt of painting my own version. I'm going to start out by sketching the mushroom slightly. I want to create a simple and straightforward composition. I'm just going to place the mushrooms in the middle instead of the side like in the reference image. And to figure out the placement, I start out by estimating the space with the large mushroom cap because I feel like that's going to be the focal point and it's going to determine the overall composition. So I can estimate the rest of the composition surrounding the largest mushroom. When I'm making corrections, like if I want to shift the position slightly or if I want to enlarge or make a certain object smaller, I make sure to draw on the correct line first before erasing. This is something that I always tell my students to do because this way the mistake becomes our guideline and we know which area to avoid. Whereas if we erase the wrong line first, we might end up drawing at the same place. As for the moss surrounding the mushrooms, I'm going to add more types. I'm not even sure if these are moss or not, but I just want to add tiny plants around it just to give it a little something extra for the composition. So here I'm making up tiny fern shapes and I'm just going to pick like two or three types of plants that I want to incorporate in this composition. You can also maybe add tiny flowers if you would like to. It will look cute but I didn't really want to overcomplicate this composition so I just want a couple of elements which are the mushrooms and the plants and I also add a little bit of soil as the base to hold everything together in place. So here, after cleaning out the outline, I also added the texture underneath the large cap of the mushroom. And before I start painting, I also want to map out a little bit of areas for the highlights. So I'm pretty much done with the outline here. Before I start painting, let me just go over the colors quickly. This is Burnt Umber by Holbein, Yellow Ochre by Roman Schmal, New Gamboge by Daniel Smith, Titanium Gold Ochre by Schminke, Of Titanium by Daniel Smith, Crimson Lake by Holbein, Prussian Blue by Holbein, Quinn Red by Daniel Smith, Paints Grey Bluish by Schminke, and Sap Green by Holbein. I'll also be using Bleed Proof White by Dr. P.H. Martins. I'm going to start by mixing the color of the highlight for the cap of the mushroom. For this, I started with a mixture of Quin Red with Titanium Gold Ochre as the main color. And I also added a little bit of Prussian Blue and I left the excess on the side. So I'm only taking a tiny bit of it. And I also added a lot of water into this so the consistency is very, very light. As for the surrounding area of the highlights, I'm still using the same color mixture but I added a little bit of Quinn Red so it's a little bit more pink. And I'm also going to place this at the top of the large mushroom cap just like in the reference image. Then while the surface is still wet, I'm going to mix a purple tone from Prussian Blue with Quinn Red. I'm going to use a very thin consistency of this to add on to the wet surface on the right hand side. So I'm going to create the actual color of the mushroom. For this, I used a mix of titanium gold ochre with quin red, and I want to use a medium consistency to paint the rest of this large mushroom cap. As you can see from the reference image, there's a portion at the bottom of the mushroom caps which are white. I'm not sure if they're part of the scales or the skirt of the mushroom, but I'm just going to leave that area white. 
Now I'm going to further separate the lightest area of the mushroom cap. So for this, I use the same mix as before, but I'm only adding a really light consistency on top of the base color. Now I'm going to go back again to the mix of Quin Red and Titanium Gold Ochre in a medium to thick consistency to just slowly build up the vividness of the color. And as I get closer to the bottom where the white scales are, I'm going to create thin lines following the slight curvature at the bottom of the cap. You might notice that sometimes I miss painting certain areas and it left out some white negative spaces, but that's completely fine. I'm just going to leave it like that because I find that this actually adds additional texture. Next, I'm going to introduce a darker value. For this, I use the same mix with the addition of Crimson Lake and I'm going to use a thick consistency of this. I want this color to slowly gradate to the base color at the bottom of the mushroom cap, so here I'm softening the transition with a clean damp brush. Next I'm going to mix buff titanium to titanium gold ochre and I'm going to use a medium consistency of this to create a transition between the red mushroom caps to the white scales. So from here, I'm going to move on to the second mushroom. I'm following the same steps. I'm starting with the highlights from a mix of Quin Red and Titanium Gold Ochre in a very, very thin consistency. And I'm also going to add the really light consistency of the purple mix. Here I'm working on the mid-tone again. So this is the same mix as the highlight, but in a medium consistency. And I'm just going to cover the whole mushroom cap. As I get closer to the bottom, I'm going to add new gamboge into the base color and I'm going to use this to create a transition from the red to the white. Now I'm going to add a thicker consistency of the base color and I'm going to go over the mid-tone area again. At the moment, the edges around the highlights look a little bit too messy and too harsh, so I'm just going to soften the edges using a clean damp brush. Since the left side of the mushroom cap is slightly covered by the larger mushroom, I'm going to darken the left side using a bit more crimson lake. As I was painting though, I felt like the left side needs to be darker in terms of value to increase the contrast, so I added a little bit of paint gray bluish to the crimson lake. Going back to the large mushroom cap, I'm just going to clean some of the edges and add extra detail to the reflective surface, then soften the edges to make it a bit more subtle. I'm going to do the same thing for this mushroom, I'm just cleaning out the edges here by using a clean damp brush. And onto the last mushroom, I'm going to use the purple color mixture in a very light consistency to paint the highlighted area and then I'm going to use the very light pink color to fill in the rest of the space and then go back in with a thicker version while the surface is still damp. I'm still working on a wet surface here and I'm going to add an even darker red with Crimson Lake for the top portion of the cap. At the very tip, I'm going to add a mix of Crimson Lake with Paints Grey Bluish only to a very small portion of this and then I'm going to let the color mingle by itself. In the reference image, there's a larger portion of white underneath the cap of the small mushroom and the medium sized mushroom. I accidentally painted over that area, this wasn't intentional, so you might want to take that into consideration as you're painting this. Next, I'm going to paint the gills underneath the cap. For this, I'm going to create two color mixtures. The first one is a muted creamy blue color. So for that, I use a mix of Prussian blue, Quinn Sienna, titanium gold ochre, and a little bit of Quinn red. And I'm also going to activate a lot of buff titanium on a separate part of my palette. I'm painting using buff titanium by itself as the base color. Then I'm going to use the blue color mixture mixed with the buff titanium. I'm painting this while the surface is still wet and I'm creating a little bit of a curvature in the lines that I make directed from the center of the caps outwards. 
This doesn't have to be accurate because we are painting on a damp surface so it's somewhat going to blur out. I just want the center of the mushroom to be much darker in comparison to the outer inner lining of the gills. Next, I'm going to further develop the darker values. For this, I used the same mixture but I didn't mix it with buff titanium and I'm placing it at the center and then softening the blend outwards. Here I'm going to increase the saturation for the edges at the back of the mushroom cap and for this I used a mix of Quin Red, Titanium Gold Ochre and New Gamboge. Now onto the stem, as the base color I just used Buff Titanium. This might look a bit more creamy than Buff Titanium because I probably had a little bit of the previous color mixture still on my brush but I intentionally just use a bit of buff titanium and as for the top, I want to darken the area right under the cap. As for the color, I use a mix of buff titanium with a touch of Quin Red and Prussian Blue. Because I want the stems to stay completely separate from each other, I'm just going to dry this off and I'm going to do the same thing for the rest of the mushroom stems. Once I'm done covering the base color of the stems, I'm just going to dry everything off. Next, I'm going to move on to the greeneries. For this, I'm going to create two mixtures, one from Sap Green and New Gamboge, and the other lighter green from Titanium Gold Ochre and a little bit of Sap Green. Here I'm starting out with the light green first, and I'm just covering each of the leaves on the left hand side. When I'm painting a small area, I do want a very light load on my brush. This way, the paint will also dry quite fast at this point. While the surface is still slightly cold to the touch but mostly dry, I'm going to add the darker green mix and I place it in the middle to the bottom of the leaves. For the next greenery, I'm going to create this moss similar to the one from the reference image. For this, I just painted lines in the middle and then I paint on sort of like veins of the leaves without the actual leaf petal and then I paint more of those lines on both sides again. Trying to make the lines as close and bushy as possible, you do need a very light load for this. If not, the paint will just puddle together. So if you want, you can also use a smaller brush. For the next one, I'm going to paint these tiny ferns and since I've already outlined it, I'm just going to fill it in with the same color. The next greenery will be like the first one, but for this I tried to change up the color slightly by adding yellow ochre in the mix. So those are basically the three types of plants or greeneries I want surrounding the mushrooms. I'm just going to fill in the rest of the space with the moss, but you can create your own shapes for your leaves and greeneries to customize your painting. Once I'm done with the moss, I'm going to move back to the stems again. For this, I'm going to do a very light glaze using titanium gold ochre. And I want to place this at the bottom and the middle portion of the stem, leaving the top part with the cooler buff titanium color, whereas the bottom has more of a creamy, warmer tone. Here I'm going to exaggerate the darker areas underneath the mushroom caps. For this, I used the previous mixture from Buff Titanium, Prussian Blue with Quin Red. And I also switch the hue slightly by mixing in some of the Titanium Gold Ochre into the cool Buff Titanium mix. While I wait for the stems to dry, I'm going to move back to the gills underneath the cap again of the large mushroom and I'm going to add on the cooler buff titanium mix, this time with a bit more Prussian blue and Quin Red in the mixture to increase the value. I'm going to go back to the stems, which should be dry by now, and I'm going to add on yellow ochre from the bottom upwards to create the texture of the stem. I create vertical lines close together going upwards, and I'm more or less following the placement of these textures as the reference image. Be careful not to overdo them though because at one point I felt like this is a bit too much and now the stem looks kind of rough so I'm going to soften everything by just smudging it with a clean damp brush and taking off the excess using tissue. 
I want the bottom of the stem to have a slight reflective color from the small mushroom cap, so I used the mushroom cap pink color with extra titanium gold ochre to paint that area. Now going back to the top of the stem, I'm going to add the cooler shadows. For this, I used the Cool Buff Titanium Mix, and I'm painting lines close together just like how I painted the texture at the bottom of the stem. Next, I'm painting the detail off the gills using a mix of Prussian Blue and a touch of Quin Red. And I switch to my liner brush to make it a bit easier for me to paint the curved lines from the inner part of the mushroom cap. For the outer portion though, I try to warm up the color by using the same mixture with titanium gold ochre and a little bit of Quin Red. So that's pretty much how I paint the mushroom stem. Now I'm going to apply this to the smaller mushroom stems by using the same colors and similar textures. At any point, if you feel like some of the colors need to be a bit darker or a bit more saturated, you can always go back in to add another thin layer and see how that balances out with the rest of the painting. After looking at the caps again, I felt like the red was a little bit too rosy and I want the red to be a bit warmer so I added a mix of Quin Red Titanium Gold Ochre with New Gamboge this time to make it a bit more orangey and I'm going to apply this for all three mushroom caps. For the smallest one, I want the bottom to be lighter so I'm going to extend the color by adding more Titanium Gold Ochre at the bottom. While looking at this, the stems still look kind of flat, so I'm going to add darker shadows along the sides by using the previous mixture of Burnt Umber, Prussian Blue, and Titanium Gold Ochre. After defining the form of the stems, now the plants look flat in comparison to the rest of the painting. So I'm going to add the darker values from a mix of sap green, paints grey bluish, and burnt umber. I'm going to add this darker green to parts of the moss, mainly the thicker stems, and also slight shadows along one side of the ferns, just to define the shapes a little bit more. And after doing this, I also felt like I needed to add more moss around to make the surrounding area look a bit more lush. And this is something that you can layer on using a thick consistency so the color can stand against the stem of the mushrooms. If finer areas of the moss are blending in too much with the stem because the tonal value is too similar, I like to rely on some of those finer details using the same dark green mix. And I find that this also adds a bit more depth and thickness to the moss because you can still see bits of the lighter greens behind the dark green mixture. As for the plants with the round leaves, I decided to use Quin Red to paint the stems to make the colors pop. I also used the dark green mix in a thin consistency just to paint a midrib detail for these round leaves. And to bring the composition together, I want to add soil to connect the plants and the mushrooms together. As for the soil, I used a mix of burnt umber, paints grey bluish, and crimson lake to make the brown a little bit more reddish. I'm painting using a medium to thick consistency straight away because I want this dark brown to be very dark in comparison to the rest of the painting and this will also make the greeneries pop out a little bit more. I also like to dirty parts of the stem, especially around the bottom using this brown mix but in a thinner consistency. Underneath the soil, I just want to add some dots as specks of loose soil. I want to bring everything together a little bit more, so I'm going to create a really light wash for the background using a touch of green that I had left on my palette with a lot of titanium gold ochre. 
Next, I'm going to use Bleed Proof White to add light reflections at the top of the mushroom cap as well as little tiny dots as imperfections on the mushroom caps. I use a medium to light consistency of the Bleed Proof White for this because I don't want the white to be too glaring. For the edges of the mushroom cap, I added thin lines as textural transition from the red part of the cap to the white skirt or the scales underneath. And because the scales behind the mushroom cap is white, just like the color of the paper, I decided to extend the background wash upward so I can leave out the white negative space for the white edges. So that's it for this painting. I'm just going to finish adding the textures for the bottom of the mushroom caps and also add final adjustments to balance everything together as well as adding more textures and imperfections on the caps. We are finally done with this painting. I hope you guys enjoyed this one as much as I did because I always love to paint mushrooms. Like usual, all the list of tools as well as my social media links will be in my description box. I will also have the outline available in my coffee shop. If you guys are still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!